I'm at the Bicentennial Tower now in Erie, and it rises 187 feet above me. From the top, you can see southward over the city of Erie and northward over the lake itself. However, in these waters lurks a very small fish that is a very big threat to the North American water ecosystems. Its name, the round goby. The round goby fish is a native of the Black and Caspian Seas. It was first discovered in the St. Clair River in 1990 and was probably accidentally brought in cargo ships. The goby is an example of what can happen when a species from one habitat is introduced into another. In just a few years, the goby, along with the zebra mussel, another non-native species, has taken over parts of Lake Erie, which poses two problems. They are changing the ecosystem's natural balance, and they are passing contaminants up the food chain, eventually to humans. Should I close this up? Or we... Yeah, close this okay. I went for some goby fishing with Eric Ober, an environmental specialist for Sea Ground. In light of the large number of environmental issues facing the Lake Erie watershed, Pennsylvania Sea Grant was established in 1998 to teach the public about the environment and improve the general environmental health of the Lake Erie watershed. The problem we have here with gobies is they have such a competitive advantage through spawning and so forth that the numbers have just exploded in the lake. What we're afraid of is because these gobies probably have higher levels of these contaminants in their tissue that we may see a transfer of those contaminants up through the food chain to the game fish that people are out there catching to eat. I'll show you how we do this and then I'm going to let you catch one. Okay. okay. All right. Can you put a worm on a hook? I can put a worm on a hook. <laughs> There's a goby right now. I got one on. You got a goby already? Yeah. I don't believe it. Right here. The <laughs> Look at that. He's cute, though. Yeah. He's a cute little bugger. Look at him. But he's evil. You see the black evil. spot in the dorsal is one of the identifying characteristics uh -huh. there. And what were you saying on the bottom? And How on else the can bottom, they, they, have have the, the, <laughs> they have this unusual... Uh, pelvic fin arrangement. See this, how it's kind of coming scooped out and saw on the bottom of the mm -hmm. belly there? Actually, the problem doesn't start with the goby fish. It starts with another exotic species called the zebra mussel. Okay, so I'm going to explain this to you a little bit here. These are zebra mussels, and they were accidentally introduced to Lake Erie. And they filter the water in order to eat plankton and give the water that beautiful, clear look that it has. However, when they do that, they're ingesting contaminants in the water as well. But then our friend, the goby fish, he comes along and he also eats the zebra mussels, thereby ingesting those same contaminants. And then after that, the bigger fish, like smallmouth bass or perch, come along and eat him. And they also ingest these contaminants. So when you and I go to eat some fish, we may also ingest these contaminants. Because these contaminants can be harmful to humans, Sea Grant has issued fish advisories recommending that people limit their consumption of certain species. Right now we have a fish advisory on the lake mm -hmm. for different species, for different sizes of fish. Uh, like walleye over 23 inches, you should only eat one meal a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is that? Uh, because of PCBs that have been found in the fish. Once they get in the environment, they're a very persistent chemical and can stay there for years without degrading. We don't want people consuming them to have uh, uh, developed cancer. They've done some studies on women from the Great Lakes states who uh, were subsistence fishermen who ate a lot of Great Lakes fish and a lot of their children have uh, uh, learning difficulties. Uh, they're slow learners and they've attributed it to the uh, PCBs in these Great Lakes fish. Now do you want to try to catch one? Yeah, I mean that, what was that, like 30 seconds yeah. and you caught one? Okay, what I want you to do is just when you push this button uh -huh. and release it, your line will drop. Okay. So just let it drop. You may have to pull some more line out. You want to get it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, ready? <laughs> let me ask you something. Can you, 
are you going to be able to remedy this problem or are you going to just have to live with this fish? Well, the problem with the gobies, uh, as also with the zebra mussels, is there are types of uh, poisons and stuff that, that could kill zebra mussels, can kill gobies, but it would also kill all the rest of the aquatic life that's out there in the lake. Although there isn't an immediate solution to the environmental impact of the goby, Sea Grant has set up a watch program that hopefully will contain the spread of the fish into other parts of Pennsylvania. All right, I've been out here for maybe a half hour, and friend Eric here puts the rod in and catches a goby like that. And I haven't caught one yet. We don't catch one now. <laughs> Give me a goby. All right, I feel good about this cast. You know you get that feeling. Just feel good about it.